Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, for the how-to series, we will be going over the most requested and infamous bodyweight dip. I'll be covering the dip on both bars and gymnastic rings. The dip is a pushing, close kinetic chain bodyweight exercise, meaning more than one joint and muscles are involved during the dip while our hands are maintained in a fixed position throughout each rep. This is one of the most basic and foundational pushing compound exercises that you'll see often in the world of calisthenics. Mastering the dip can go so far in your training, both in terms of strength and size development, as well as carrying over into other strength-based skills such as the muscle-up. There is unlimited potential when it comes to progressing your dips, whether you're starting with just eccentrics, using rings, or adding weight. The dip is a lifelong friend in calisthenics. During the dip, a multitude of muscles are working, but the primary muscles involved include your triceps, pectoralis major, and anterior delts. In regards to form, we're going to go over both bar dips and ring dips. Although both hold similar technique cues with form, there are some important differences to go over. So starting with bar or parallel dips, before we get into form, it's good to know that not all parallels are going to have the same distance between each other. Some places might have bars closer to one another, other places might have them further apart. And dip bars, such as this one, shaped like a V, provides you more options in regards to the distance between each hand. This is important important because everyone, structurally speaking, is not the same. Some might feel more comfortable using a wider distance, and some may feel more comfortable using a narrow distance. I try not to overthink this and just stick to a position that allows me to perform dips with less complications. Okay, so in the starting position, we want to be in a support hold with our shoulders depressed and scapula in a neutral position. It's also important to pay attention to your elbow pits in this position. Ideally, we want them facing forward with our arms in an externally rotated position. Position. This will help avoid flaring the elbows outward. Also, a good tip is to make sure your wrists are stacked over your hands. Maintain an active position and avoid resting in the support hold. During the eccentric or negative phase, brace your core, keep tension in your legs, and control yourself on the way down. Here, you want your shoulder blades to retract as you lower down while keeping your neck in a neutral position. Think about lowering straight down with an upright posture and a very slight lean forward. At the bottom, we want to reach that 90 degree position with our arms, or go past that increasing the range of motion if you have the mobility and strength into shoulder extension to do so. In general, stick to the range that is most comfortable for you to currently perform, and over time test a deeper range if you choose to do so. During the concentric or ascending phase, while keeping tension in your core and legs, push to the top where you'll return back to a support hold with shoulders depressed and arms locked out. It's important to finish where you started. You want to gain the benefits of the dip by using a full range of motion and fully shortening those triceps at the top with your arms locked out. Now let's go over ring dips. For ring dips, it's important to keep the rings at shoulder width or in a position that'll have the rings closer to your torso. The closer the rings are to your torso, the more stable the position becomes. And considering you're already dealing with the instability aspect of the rings, you don't want to make it harder on yourself by having the rings too far apart. This could also help reduce your chance of sustaining an injury, especially to those of you who are new to ring dips. In the starting position, the same cues apply here. We want to start with a strong support hold, having our shoulders depressed and in a neutral position. A good tip here, especially for those new to ring dips, is to use a platform of some sort to set yourself up rather than jumping into the support hold. This will help you avoid expending extra energy and effort to fix yourself once you get up to the top, allowing you to properly set yourself up. During the eccentric, continue to keep those rings close to your torso while maintaining an upright posture with your core and legs engaged. As you lower, retract those shoulder blades and keep your neck in a neutral position. The cool thing here is that the rings allow us to choose a position that feels comfortable versus a fixed neutral grip position on parallettes. So stick to what's
what's comfortable for you. At the bottom, remember to aim for that 90 degree angle or lower down further if you've earned that range and ability to do so. During the concentric, keep your core and legs engaged as you ascend with the rings close to your torso. Now at the top, you're going to want to finish in that locked out position to gain the true benefits of the ring dip. Here we are improving not only our straight arm strength, but also in the rings turned out position, we are further challenging our triceps, shoulders, chest, and stability. Getting into the rings turned out position is the absolute goal of the ring dip, but it's not going to be easy for most. So it's okay to finish at the top with a neutral position for now, while you work on your ring turned out holds separately if you choose to do so. Check out my ring support hold video for more information on that. You can even go from neutral to working on a slight 45 degree rings turned out position and over time work towards that full rings turned out hold. Work towards that rings turned out position so that you can receive the full benefits of the ring dip. Now let's go over some common mistakes. We'll start with the two most common mistakes of them all, half reps and momentum. Half repping and creating momentum diminishes the results you want from the dip and you're truly missing out on optimal results by cheating yourself with half reps and creating momentum. If you want to actually improve your dip strength and gain the most from it in terms of building muscle, use a full range of motion and control the dip. Do not let it control you. Next, rounding the shoulders. Rounding the shoulders at the bottom is a sure way to cause issues down the line and potentially produce an injury. We want to avoid allowing our shoulder blades to elevate and round excessively, which places a lot of unnecessary stress on the anterior portion of our shoulders. Make sure to retract those shoulder blades on the way down and keep that strong upright posture. Another mistake is excessively flexing the hips and spine to compensate for a lack of shoulder extension and essentially reducing the range of motion to make the dip easier to perform, potentially cheating yourself. Now, there are cases such as performing weighted dips competitively where flexing the spine and hips to a certain degree would actually help allow you to dip more weight. This is something I picked up from Michael Schultz, otherwise known as King of Weighted. I'll leave a link for his channel below. Aside from that, if you're performing bodyweight dips, a very slight flexion of the hips and spine is okay. Which brings me to the last mistake I want to go over, loss of control. Losing control of the dip tends to be seen with an uncontrolled eccentric, no tension maintained in the legs or core, and excessive extension of our hips and spine. Those of you with solid shoulder extension mobility may actually end up making this mistake as you can easily go past that 90 degree position, but without being conscious of each rep, you may get sloppy with it. Just remember to keep tension in your core and legs while controlling the eccentric to stay safe and optimize your results. All right, now let's go over some progressions. We'll start with parallettes first, consider they would be the first in progressions in terms of difficulty and then move on to ring dip progressions. So on bars or stationary objects we have support hold, assisted dips, negatives, band assisted dips, and finally the body weight dip. On rings we have support hold, assisted dips, negatives, neutral ring dip, 45 degree rings turned out dip, and finally a full rings turned out dip. All right guys, that's the end of my video on mastering and learning how to perform the body weight dip. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and click that subscribe button down below for more content in the future. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment down below and I look forward to answering them. Thank you guys for watching and as always, enjoy the process.